The first thing you need to be ready for is being ready to be disliked. I remember when I first started YouTube, I would receive comments saying things like, your edits are so bad. Why are you even doing this? Don't give up your day job. And I can't even put screenshots of these comments to show you because I deleted them. Because guess what? I wasn't ready to be disliked. I planned to start YouTube for years before I actually did because I had the fear no one would want to watch my videos. There's so many videos out there, why would anyone choose to click on mine? And if they did choose to click on mine, would they actually like what they're watching? It's a conversation I had with myself so many times before one day I stopped talking and actually did it. I can still remember the feeling when I finally published my first video and saw the first view, the first like, the first comment and the first subscriber come through. But I can also remember the feeling of seeing the first dislike, the first bad comment, the first time someone unsubscribed from my channel. The thing with YouTube is, it's a journey, a wild journey. A journey with ups and downs and you need to be ready for both sides of it. People are always going to have opinions and yeah, a lot of them will be bad, but there's really only one opinion that matters and that's yours. As long as you believe in yourself and you enjoy what you're doing, you've got this. To be successful in this game or any game for that matter, you need to make mistakes. You simply can't learn and grow without making mistakes along the way. Don't try and be perfect because no one is perfect and no one will ever be perfect. Be yourself. The more you create, the more comfortable you'll get in front and behind the camera. Don't keep putting things off till tomorrow because I'm telling you, tomorrow will never come. The way I look at creating videos for YouTube is, it's fun. I enjoy the whole process of it. It doesn't feel like work to me, and I personally think that should apply to you. It should be fun. You should enjoy it. Don't overload yourself with all the numbers, the likes, the watch time, the subscribers, the comments, the click-through rates. All those things are there to guide you, not to control you. Don't listen to the stuff out there saying you need to post at least once a week. No, you don't. You post when you want to post. If you're making 45 minute videos, you're probably not going to be able to post once every week versus someone who's making three minute videos. Yes, maybe they will be able to post once a week, but it's not about quantity, it's about quality. You could put two amazing videos out there in a month that you've spent loads of time on versus someone else putting four videos out there in a month that they've rushed through just so they can say they've posted four videos and your two videos could potentially do better than their four videos put together. It's not about how many videos you post, it's about what you post. Now yes, posting more will obviously attract a wider audience, but you can only do what you can do. Remember, you're in control over everything. Not him, not her, not YouTube, not the analytics, you. There's a few things I wish I did when I started YouTube that I do now that I didn't do then. Some things that would definitely have made my life easier and probably grown my channel a lot quicker. And it all starts with the plan. It's so mad for me to think of a time back when I started YouTube, when I didn't used to plan my videos. And when I say didn't plan my videos, I mean didn't plan. I would come up with my ideas, have a couple of bullet points down, but nothing to follow. And let me tell you, when I went out to shoot, it was difficult. I, I just pressed record and my mind went blank. I just would wing it. And yeah, things just took so long and I would get stressed out. Because the thing is, planning your video correctly, the only person it's gonna help is you. Now, everyone's gonna plan them differently. You might wanna script every single word. I personally don't like scripting every single word. I like to do things a bit more naturally, but you can script every single word and either memorize it, have it in front of you, have an auto cue, whatever the setup is. But for me, fast forward into now, I write my idea down and then I write 
key bullet points down and prompts down throughout the video and different shots that I need to take. So I've got a clear structured plan to follow so I don't go out and shoot and then my mind goes blank. Now, if you don't wanna write things down word for word because you don't want a script, like I said, you can write prompt sentences. So each section, each different section that you're planning on speaking about, you can write the first sentence of that. And then if you get stuck, you can just read that sentence and that will jog your memory. And then you'll keep speaking, hopefully into further, into the information that you're speaking about. And I don't like it to get to the day of the shoot for it to be the first time I'm saying those words. I practice in the car as if the camera was there. I practice at home as if the camera was there. And the problem is, is if you get to the day of the shoot and the first time you say those words is the day of the shoot, it's, it's gonna be weird and it's not gonna be, you're just, your mind will go blank. Whereas if you've already had essentially that conversation with yourself and you've run through it all before, again, the day of the shoot will flow more naturally because you know roughly what you're gonna say. Another thing I like to do is do my research. Uh, and what I mean by that is search for similar video topics, a, a video I'm gonna create create and not necessarily watch the whole video but I actually dive into the comments and see if there's common things that come up as questions that haven't necessarily been answered because the thing is people are always going to ask questions in the comment section and not all of them will be answered but what I like to do is write down common things that come up and if they haven't been answered uh, or sometimes even if they have I'll make sure that I include that in my plan so I'll write those questions down and I'll make sure I find the answer to it so I include it because if someone has asked a question in a previous video and it hasn't been answered chances are a week later they'll go and search for the same video and your video might pop up and bingo you've included what they've asked previously and then they'll think oh great this you know this person knows what they're on about and that could convert into a new subscriber to your channel the first 10 to 30 seconds of your video is the most important part to determine whether a viewer is going to continue watching or not. What did I do in this video today to hopefully get you to continue watching to this point minutes in? Um, back in the day, if you watch some of my first uploads, you'll see that I used to spend so long waffling on uh, with things like, you know, welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be doing this. Today we're going to be doing that. The viewer already should know what the video is about before they click on it. So you don't need to waffle on about necessarily what the video is going to be about. It's just going to waste time. And you don't need to have a big musical intro uh, like I used to do as well. My intro, I think, lasted over a minute at one point before. And it was only later on when I was watching other videos that had a similar setup and I was getting bored because the intro was so long. I was like, get to the point. And I was like, if I'm feeling like that watching someone else's video, then other people must be feeling like that when they're watching mine. So I made some adjustments and now my intro, my musical intro, if you want to call it that, literally lasts for about three or four seconds. And I don't use it all the time. I only use it when I need to break things up because sometimes I'll do a pre-intro where I might say a funny one line and then it will uh, go to the musical intro and then to the main part of the video. Again, watch some of my recent uploads and you'll see what I mean. But that first 10 to 30 seconds is so key and you don't want to be waffling on and you don't want all this musical stuff you want to get straight to the point because you want to hook people in you don't want them to click off as part of the plan you need to know if you're going to be doing any voiceover sections and if so what is going to be shown whilst you're speaking because let's take you know this video for example obviously there was a good few minutes at the beginning where it was voiceover so I knew I had to have certain shots to cover that section you know of me speaking so that forms part of the plan as well and along with are you going to need any like b-roll shots so if you're speaking about a certain product let's say a camera um instead of it just being you speaking about the camera are you going to have some slow motion dramatic shots of that camera pop up and back in the day i i used to do that but it wasn't part of the plan so i'd get to the edit and then i'd be like oh actually i need to record certain things on that camera or certain things on that drone or whatever it is and it just slowed the whole process down later as if i had 
it plans to follow, I would have already done that before when I was shooting the video. I like to shoot outside in a lot of my videos and me living in London, 96.7% of the time it's raining and most of the equipment I use is not waterproof. So checking the weather, if you are planning on shooting on a location, in on location, out location, whatever you want to say is key because there's been some days where I haven't checked the weather, I've gone out and it started raining and I thought, right, this is not great, I have to abort mission. If you're shooting inside, you're not gonna have that issue. And obviously, if you're recording a vlog style video, then things are gonna happen more naturally and you don't necessarily need to check every finer detail. But if you're doing talking head videos like I am today, I knew that I was gonna be doing this section of the video in this spot because yesterday I did my little wonder. I'm in Lisbon right now and I did my little wonder and I decided that this is gonna be the spot I'm gonna do this section of the video. So I didn't come out today on the day of shoot and I was faffing around looking for locations to shoot the video I already knew and luckily I'm not in London so it's not raining although there was a little bit of rain when I came out the station uh, a little while ago and I was like, it didn't say that on the weather app but yeah, luckily it's stopped. If you're just starting up, chances are you probably won't have uh, video editing software to use and it's better for you to choose what that software is going to be at this point rather than wait until the edit so you can do some test shots, whack them onto the timeline and get familiar with the software itself, play around with all the buttons and the knobs and the sliders and all that because you don't want it to slow you down later when you come to edit and be learning how to use it then, you wanna teach yourself now. There's so many different video editing softwares out there. I used to use Final Cut back in the day. Uh, I didn't get on with it, so now I use Premiere Pro, but everyone's different and a lot of them have free trials so you can test them out before you commit to maybe paying monthly for it or paying for the whole package. But yeah, choosing the software at this point is gonna help you and speed things up later so you're familiar with how to use the software you've chosen. And the same goes for equipment. You're probably not gonna have a big collection of equipment in the early stages. Um, and you don't need to go out and buy the most expensive camera just because the big YouTubers are using the big Sony's, thousands of pounds. You don't need to go out and necessarily buy the big camera. There are some cheaper cameras out there that are really good quality and will do the job. Um, my collection I've built over time and I'm still building it to this day. There's no way on earth I would have been able to buy everything I've currently got today in the first six months or year even of me starting YouTube because it just costs so much money. But one thing I would say is don't just focus on the camera but also the audio and that's one thing I made a big mistake of not doing at the beginning and I listen back to some of my older videos now and I'm like Oh, wow, that is shocking. Yeah, audio is just as important as visuals and you need to look at the whole setup with that. If you're recording inside, are you gonna need a microphone or is the internal mics on the camera gonna be fine if you're recording outside? Are you gonna need an external mic like I've got today or is the internal mics gonna be fine? For me right now, if I was recording on the internal mics on this camera, um, it's it's very windy, so you, you this the internal mic would definitely pick it up even if I had wind reduction on, whereas an external mic like I'm using is very good at blocking out that wind. So yeah, audio is just as important as visuals. And then testing out the audio before the day of shoot is important as well because you don't want it to get to the day of shoot and if you're using an external mic like I am today be messing around with all the different levels and stuff like that because everyone speaks at a different level and you might speak quite loudly which will mean your gain levels will need to be reduced uh, or you might speak quite softly which will mean the gain levels will need to be increased and you want to know what that should that what that setup should be before you go out and shoot so again the shoot is much smoother and quicker so you're not messing around on the day so for example yesterday when i came here looking at the location i tested out the microphone because it's quite an open space obviously we're by the sea sea yeah yeah by the sea so i did a little test on my microphone to see whether i need to make any adjustments to the levels i usually have it at and then i listened to it back last night so today i was ready to literally just put the microphone on press record and go and then all the equipment that you have just make sure it's fully charged before you go out and shoot and you've got backup battery sources. You'll be surprised how quick the battery drains on these devices that you have and you don't want to go out and shoot, get to halfway through and you don't have any battery left or anything to charge it with. So bring a power bank with you so you've got something to plug into it. So if the battery inside your camera runs out, then you, yeah, you, you're not lost. Or you can have backup batteries you know, with you that you've got fully charged that you can just 
slot inside. And of course, if you're shooting inside, let's say you're doing talking head videos, tutorial videos inside, then make sure the lighting is set up correctly. If the lighting is not set up correctly, it's very, very hard to fix it in post. So you wanna do some test shots with the lighting before the day of shoot, so you know what setup you're gonna be using on the day of shoot, same with the audio, so you don't have to mess around on that day. And that's what I used to, that's not what I used to do back in the day. And I used to get to the day of shoot and I would be looking at what looks best, what sounds best. And it would just take me so long to set it all up and test it out. And really I should have done that before when I was planning the whole process of the video. And the biggest tip that I can give you that I've learned recently is plan your video at the correct point of the day. And what I mean by that is, don't start planning a video when you get into bed because I'm telling you now, your head will hit the pillow and your mind will be so active with all these ideas and plans that you just won't be able to sleep. And I actually need to take that tip, I need to take, sorry, that tip on board because I still do it to this day where I'll get in bed, I'll whack out my phone, look at the plan of a video and I'll spend half an hour, an hour on it. And yeah, I'll put my phone down, put my head on the pillow and guess what, I can't sleep. So just plan your videos during the day and make sure you have enough time before you go to sleep to switch off because yeah, you don't wanna be having sleep this night stressing over about the plans of your video. It's meant to be a fun process. So you spent all that time planning the video and it's now time for the shoot. And let me tell you what's probably gonna happen. You're gonna to get to the day of the shoot, you're gonna get your camera out, you're gonna press record and your mind will probably go blank. It still happens to me to this day. Uh, it's natural, I mean, when we press record, it suddenly feels like we've got this spotlight on us uh, and yeah, everything just kind of goes blank no matter how much of a big plan you have. But that's why you have the plan and you have those prompts because you can refer to the plan and those prompts to get you going. And then once you get going, it will be much easier and it will flow much quicker. You'll realize the more you get into the video, it will be, it will be easier. It will just flow more naturally. It's always the beginning part of the video that's the hardest when you first start speaking to the camera. And what I like to do, which might not necessarily work for everyone, is I sometimes pretend I'm on live TV or live radio uh, because the thing with live TV and live radio is there's very little room for manoeuvre and if you do mess up, uh, then you have to turn things around pretty quick. So when I press record, I sometimes vision it being transmitted to a live TV channel, so therefore if I mess up, I don't keep stressing about it. I, I turn around pretty quick, or I, if I mess up a word, I mess up a word. Cool, I just carry on. And you know what? If you mess up a word, for me, I've learned over the last year or so that actually sometimes I, well, actually now, most of the time, I just keep that, that section in. I don't worry about it. It was back in the day, I was trying to be too perfect, and if I messed up a word, of like a big paragraph, I would stop recording and redo the whole paragraph. Whereas now if I mess up a word, I just keep it in. I find it adds a bit more of a, maybe sometimes people might find it funny or it's just part of the personality or whatever. And it's just something I don't stress over now. Whereas back in the day, if I messed up one word, I would stress so much about it and I would redo the whole thing. Whereas now, I don't. And then splitting your video up into sections might help as well. So let's say you're doing a 20 minute video, uh, splitting up into four sections. If you do section one and two, all fine. And then you get to section three and you keep messing it up. You don't need to redo the whole video from the start again, because you've split it up into sections. Whereas if you try and do everything in one section and you mess up halfway, you might have to redo the whole thing. When you're talking in the video, encourage people to comment below by asking them questions and saying, you know, let me know what you think. YouTube loves engagement and that's not just likes and views and watch time. It's the comments, the conversation. And it doesn't necessarily mean if the comments aren't the best of the best, but if you've got people talking, YouTube will recognize that and maybe push your video out there a little bit more because the comments are flowing. So encourage people to comment below. If you've planned to take some B-roll clips or clips where you're gonna be showing that you're doing a voiceover or whatever it is, I always find it's better to have a few too many clips than leave yourself short because you might shoot 10 clips and then three of them 
you don't like. And if you haven't got a few backup clips to use, then you're gonna be stuck and you have to reshoot them or re-plan the video if you can't go and reshoot them. So it's better to have a few extra. You don't want too many extra clips, but it's better to have a few backup clips to work with just in case something goes wrong in the edit and some of the clips didn't come out as you planned. And then one mistake I used to make at the beginning when I started my videos was I used to do too many clips of, let's say, key moments of the video being the intro and the outro. And let's just say, I, no word of a lie, I used to probably do about 20 takes of my intro. And the problem with that is it slowed me down in the editing process because I would have 20 clips to sift through. Why did I do that? I, I don't know. Do I do that now? No, I only do about two. I do do more than one take of like an intro. So I've got that to, to, to kind of choose between. But think of it like this. When you take a selfie and you take 20 pictures, because yeah, we don't usually take one picture when we're taking a selfie, do we? But if you take 20 pictures of yourself, you then spend so long later going through those pictures trying to pick the best one and let's be honest most of them look pretty much the same apart from maybe your hand is in a different place or your lips are doing a different thing or your hair is slightly different but it just takes time to sift through it and when you get to the editing process with the video if you've got 20 of the same clips to sift through it's just going to slow the process down and stress you out whereas if you've got a couple it's good to have a couple then yeah it's not going to take so long for you to choose which one you're going to use and the biggest thing you can do when shooting is be yourself people will love you for you don't try and put on an act and be someone you're not because i'm telling you people will love you for you right so you've planned the video you've shot the video it's now time for the edit and the key thing to remember like i said earlier is the first 10 to 30 seconds of the video is the most important part to determine whether a viewer is gonna continue watching or not. So what have you decided you're gonna do in that first section of the video to keep people hooked? And if you get to the edit process and the plan you had in place and you put it on the timeline and you watch it back and it visually just doesn't work, then you don't have to stick to the plan. Remember, you're in control. You can change things up to how you want and go off the plan if you want. For example, there's been so many times where I've planned to do, well, I've shot a talking head intro like this and then it's maybe cut to my musical intro and then to the main part of the video. And I've watched it back and I thought, actually, it's just not good. It's just not good. So what I've decided to do is pick out a funny moment or interesting moment later on in the video and put a few seconds of that at the beginning and then it cuts to my music intro and then the main bit of the video and that wasn't on the plan and that's fine because like I said you're in control you don't need to stick to the plan if it doesn't necessarily work but that first 10 to 30 seconds you need to make sure it's it's just so good that it's going to keep people watching as far into the video as possible Watch the video back as a viewer and do you get bored? If you do get bored, at what moment do you get bored? And is there anything you can do to make that part of the video more interesting? Adding music sets a certain mood and tone to the video. You can add transitions in, pop up keywords. And if you have photos, for example, pop up on the screen, add sound effects. All of these elements make it more interesting. And then when you watch it back, if you get to certain parts of the video and you think well this just shouldn't be here this doesn't really add anything to the video then cut it out again it, even if it's on the plan if it if the video still flows and it still makes sense you don't have to include every single shot that you've shot if you think it doesn't really need to be there one thing i like to do is get a friend or family member to watch the video back before i export it and get their opinion on it because other sets of eyes or more uh, other people's eyes other than your more sets of wait more sets of eyes apart from your eyes is better than just one eyes is that the way to say it you know what i mean uh, just get a couple of other people to watch it uh, and get their opinion on it but be careful with this because it goes back to what i was saying earlier with if you take 20 pictures or 20 clips of something you've got too much to work with you don't want too many people to watch the video and give you opinions because a lot of people will have different views on it and if you've got too much too many opinions then you're going to be stressing yourself out with 
what do you change and you've just got too much to change and all this. Whereas if you only get two or three people to watch it, they might all say the same thing, they might say different things and it's down to you whether you use that feedback and, and change certain bits of the video. But don't get them to watch it together, get them to watch it separately because you don't want them kind of bouncing off each other's opinions. You want it to be like independent views and not them just saying, yeah, 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 do that just because the other person is saying it. So get the people you watch to just watch it alone uh, instead of together. And look, the first few edits you do are not gonna be the best. They're not gonna be perfect. In fact, there's no edits out there that are ever perfect. Watch my first few uploads compared to my recent uploads and hopefully you should see a difference and do the same with your big YouTubers. Go back to their first uploads compared to their recent uploads and you'll see that there is a progression in them on camera and their edit so don't stress too much about making it the best of the best and perfect and everything i mean it should be great and you should do everything you can to get people watching as far into the video as possible and get the information across and if it's a vlog make it interesting and all of that stuff but yeah you're going to find your creative editing style over time it will come naturally and you'll get more confident with the video editing software you'll be able to add more elements in and do more things with the software as you get more comfortable and confident with it so don't stress too much at the beginning about it might not be as good as other videos you've watched it's not good to keep comparing your videos to other people's videos everyone is different everyone has different styles and it's just just don't get into the bad point of comparing yourself too much to other videos and hopefully one day what you'll be able to do is a year into your YouTube journey look back at your previous uploads uh, compared to your recent uploads and see that natural progression over time so you've shot the video you've edited the video you've exported the video and there's one massive key element or two should i say massive key elements that are going to determine whether people actually click on your video and that is your thumbnail and title your video could be the best video in the world and if your views are down on a video it's not down to your video it's down to your thumbnail and or title you need to think of your thumbnail as a billboard a big advert for your video it's the first thing that people see when they see your video and they choose to either click on it or not click on it don't overload it with so much going on. You don't want too many words. Think of it like this. When you're scrolling through YouTube on your phone or even on a laptop, the thumbnail is so small compared to how you're actually editing it. So can you see everything that's on it even when it's at that small size? Make it eye-catching. Use you know eye-catching colors. Think of, again, a billboard. When you drive past a billboard, you only see that for a few seconds, but you should be able to tell what that billboard is advertising by those few seconds of just looking at it because it's short, snappy, effective to the point. The same thing should be with your thumbnail. And yeah, it's good to do research on other videos out there that are similar to your video topic to see what has worked. But it's not just about the thumbnail, it's about the title as well. And let's say you were making a pizza tutorial video instead of the title simply being pizza tutorial could you make it more interesting and maybe ask a question so for example it could be want to make the best pizza here's how it's more interesting than just pizza tutorial and it's probably going to get more people clicking on in it click clicking on and clicking on in it clicking on it than if it was just yeah just a standard pizza tutorial and then other elements that will need to be inputted as well as part of the video publishing process are things like your tags uh, the video description end screens video cards so with tags essentially what you're going to be inputting in that box is just your video title in various different ways of saying it uh, and just words linked to your video topic so let's take the pizza tutorial example again and you know in the tags you be putting things like pizza pizza tutorial how to make a pizza 
uh, what's the best pizza recipe, pizza recipe, just various different variations of anything relating to your video. And then with the video description, you don't need to write your life story in it, but a few lines describing your video is good and you can link your other social media accounts in it, put your email address and add a few hashtags and even link a couple of your other videos that you might want people to watch. Uh, you can do that in the description as well. And then with video cards, again, if it's your first video you're uploading or first few, you might not be using this feature straight away because essentially what the video cards feature lets you do, let's say you're talking about a certain thing in your video that you have a video already on. Uh, so let's take, for example, me. If I started talking about a certain drone right now, I would be able to put a video card up in the corner, which would pop up relating to the drone I'm talking about because I've got a video on it. And you'd be able to click on it as a viewer and then watch it after you finished watching the current video you're watching. And it's the same with the end screens. You have the option to put, I think it's up to three videos uh, max in the end screen. So when, you know, hopefully people get to the end of the video, uh, they are able to choose some of your other videos that you've linked to the end screens to click on and watch. But obviously at the beginning, if it's the first upload you're doing, you're not gonna have any videos to link, but the further in the process you get of uploading, obviously your collection will expand and you'll be able to put videos on there. And don't just leave the end screen blank, even if the video topic that you're doing currently is you haven't got any videos relating to that video topic on your channel to put at the end put other videos on there because you don't know people might be interested in other things as well that they don't realize is on your channel and only realize it through the end screens so yeah use all of these elements that youtube give you wisely and they're there to be used so use them so you've gone through the whole process you've planned the video you've shot the video you've edited the video, you've exported it, you've uploaded it, you've entered all of the information into YouTube, the title, the tags, the category, the description, everything. It's now time for the big bit. It's time to get it out there and publish. What is the best time and day to publish the video, I hear you ask? Well, that information is different for each channel and will come to you over time. Um, YouTube will give you a chart showing you when your viewers are more likely to be online or, or are online, and you can use that as a rough guide of when to post future videos. But at the beginning, you don't have that information, so don't stress about times and days. Literally, just get your videos out there. They're only gonna be able to be watched if they're published and out there. So don't stress about the numbers too much at the start. The only thing I would say with the publishing side of things, which I made the mistake at the beginning of not doing, is if you're uploading a 4K video, don't uh, set it to publish until 4K is finished processing because uh, it takes slightly longer than the standard resolution because back in the day, like I said, I would get my videos just published straight away and it would just be standard resolution. And let's say someone clicked on the video, it was the first time they had viewed your channel, your videos, and it was a low resolution video, which meant it was all, yeah, just not high quality. They're gonna click off of it because they think, well, this is just not good and they might not return. So just be patient and wait for the 4K to finish process. And it doesn't take too long. It depends obviously on the length and the size of your video, but once it's finished processing, there's no time to waste. Just get your videos out there. Engagement is a massive thing once your video is published. And what I mean by engagement is I, I mean replying to comments. So at the beginning, uh, when I used to publish my first videos and I would get some comments, I don't know why, but I didn't used to reply to hardly any comments on my channel. And I look back at it now and I think, well, I wasted so many opportunities of maybe getting more subscribers because the thing is, if someone asks a question in the comments section or says something and you reply to it, they most of the time will reply back with something. Not all the time, but they'll reply back with something. And let's say they did ask you a question and you answered it. They might reply saying, thanks mate, just subscribed, right? So just because you've answered that question, they've now come on board and subscribed to your channel. Whereas like I said at the beginning, I didn't do that and God knows how many people I probably missed out on getting subscribed. So reply to the comments. At the beginning, it's easy because you don't get so many comments coming through usually. So you're able to keep up with pretty much all comments. As time goes on and videos start to do a little bit better, 
and the views and comments go up yeah there might not be it might not be realistic for you to reply to every single comment but try to do your best and a key thing with this is not letting the comments overload you uh, set some time aside and say right okay on sunday i'm going to spend an hour just replying to as many comments as i can from the previous week um, rather than stressing too much about every time someone comments replying straight away it's not always feasible and one thing that I've definitely learned over time as the comments have increased is don't let the comments control you like all of this you control the comments so reply but reply when you can and don't feel pressured to reply instantly or within a few hours and with the whole comment side of things yes you're gonna get bad comments it's gonna happen I still get them to this day as I did at the beginning but not all bad comments are necessarily bad comments so you need to use some of the bad comments if that's the way you view it as maybe constructive criticism so for example if 10 people have commented the same thing uh, maybe they've said something like you're speaking too fast in your video for me to understand then you realize that that's a common theme that people are picking up that you need to work on going forward so don't be shut down and stressed out because it might seem a bad comment because actually you could use that to your advantage and make yourself and your videos better by taking on board what they've said and use it in future videos and of course YouTube has so many tools for you to use to guide you like I said at the beginning don't let these tools control you use them to guide you have a look at the average view durations the click-through rates look at things that are working look at things that are not working if your average view duration is down then yeah maybe you need to look at things in future videos going forward uh, if your click-through rates are not good you can change your title at any point and you can change your thumbnail at any point it's not set in stone but maybe then going forward focus on future projects rather than looking always behind at past stuff and see what it is you can change and make better going forward but the biggest advice i can give you as things start to grow on your channel is don't let the numbers control you let them guide you and i've made this mistake so many times where i get too deep into the numbers and it stresses you out and the whole process is supposed to be fun and you're in control over everything like i said so don't let it take over just let it guide you through and there's only one thing left to do once you've done all of that and that is repeat mm -hmm.